In winter of 2002, I was teaching in Budapest, Hungary. I was an English teacher in a high school there. And we were having a department meeting. And so we were gathered together with the English, American English teachers and the Hungarian English teachers. And we were talking about what was going to be coming up. And I was leaning back in my chair, not paying attention. Uh, but then my guess what happened is my chair gave out and my knee. And luckily behind me, the nice cast iron radiator was there to catch my fall. Uh, and so there's a debate in my house whether it's radiator or radiator. That's we'll let you discuss that later. Um, but so I was I was a bit more embarrassed than in pain. But as I, I touched the back of my head, I noticed it was bleeding. And so one of my coworkers uh, took me to a local clinic uh, where I was examined by a trained medical medical professional who did not speak English. So my colleague was translating. To me, what the person was saying. And I was, I was told I was going to need two stitches in the back of my head. Little did I know that I guess Hungarian medicine is different than American medicine. So he took a piece of gauze and put it to my head and then stitched the gauze into my head. I don't understand. And then he went and put some pink antiseptic or disinfectant or whatever it is on it. And so I had a pink bow sewn to my head. For two weeks, I had to walk around with a pink bow on my head. We were even it was we were at a uh, concert for one of Dawn's uh, her school. There was a Christmas concert over there, and her students kept asking, "Why does your fiance have a bow so you head?" And she said it was the holidays, of course, or something like that. But you know, I, I often would use this story then, especially if I saw my students leaning back in a chair, then I would just point to my head and give them that teacher look, and they would stop. And even to this day, I use it. So when my kids are leaning back in the chair, I just go up to them. So there was this one time I was leaning in my chair and they start groaning and rolling their eyes. And then of course they put their legs back safely on the ground. So I use this story to teach a moral principle. It's designed to, to teach the dangers of leaning back in your chair and the, the dangers of trusting Hungarian medicine. But, <laughs> This is an earthly story with an earthly meaning. And in the parable, though, where Jesus tells stories that we can all relate to, that are earthly stories, of course, with heavenly meanings. Right? And so he told these stories to provide insight to his mission and his purpose. He said they were to open our eyes and ears so that we can see and hear him. And so he used parables. Uh, talking about known ideas like falling off the back of your chair, things like that. Uh, so they can relate it to the unknown, the mysteries of the kingdom. Daryl Johnson, in his sermon on this very parable we're looking at today, he says that Jesus speaks parables to make us think, and in the process, adopt a whole different perspective on life. His perspective. Jesus' parables are not nice Sunday school lessons, with a little moral to take home and try to apply to our lives. His stories are designed to unsettle us, uh, to challenge us in some cases, even offend our understanding uh, of the ways things are or should be. They are creative stories through which Jesus intentionally disorients our thinking in order to reorient our thinking around the kingdom of God. And so parables aren't just little moral tales told by Jesus, reminding us not to lean in our chairs or be nice to other people, but parables are to reorient our perspective, to give us a new eye to see or new ears to hear. They are to help us understand the mysteries and the secrets of the kingdom of God, how Jesus is revealing a shifting in perspective. He would use stories that they would they could reorient their point of view as they would focus their lives on Jesus. And so we've been looking at these different parables over the last few weeks. We've looked at the parable of the growing seed, where a farmer plants seeds and not knowing what, how or why these seeds begin to grow. And then we looked at the parable of the mustard seed, where this little yellow mustard seed grows out of this littleness grows into something powerful, becomes a, a tree where all can come. 
You know, last week we looked at the, the story of the wheat and the weeds. We learned that the, the kingdom of God is sown in the midst of the kingdoms of the earth, and that the seeds of hope are mixed with the seeds of hurt, and we are we're called to grow together and offer hope in our hurting world. And in today's story, we see a farmer that goes out to sow seeds in the field. He scatters the seed, dispersing it left and right, this way and that. Seeds are flying here, there, and everywhere. And some seeds land on a footpath, and the path where the farmers are walking around the field, and it's such hard ground that the seed doesn't penetrate the ground, so the birds come and eat it up. And some seed lands on ground that's filled with rocks. And so the seed kind of quickly takes root, but they're because of the shallowness of the earth and the scorching sun, they quickly wither and die. And then other seed land on thorny ground or with thorns, and, and they get choked up by the they choke up the young plant, and this plant cannot grow successfully. But then other seed fall onto rich, good soil, and the plant takes roots and grows and produces a vibrant and exceedingly healthy crop, multiplying it 30, 60, and 100 times. And so we're actually going to be looking at this parable for the next two weeks. Next week, we'll look at the different types of soil, the, the footpath and the rock and the thorns. And we'll talk about the costumes of our hearts, the things that we, we put on to keep us from fully growing into who God wants us to be. But this week, we'll look at the sower, the seed, and the soil. Because some people call this the parable of the sower. Claiming that the central theme is the, the one who sows the seed. Others call this the parable of the seed, claiming the central idea is the seed that which the sower scatters into the soil. And others call it the parable of the soils, claiming the central theme is the soil where the sower scatters the seed. So, which is it? Is it the, the sower, the seed, or the soil? You probably get some right. The correct answer is yes. <laughs> all three are the central theme. That the, the parable needs all three to be complete. That the mystery of the kingdom of God is found in the interaction between the sower, the seed, and the soil. And this parable appears in three of the gospels. It appears in Matthew 13, Mark 4, and in Luke 8. And each of them tell this parable slightly differently. And each are relating this parable to a different audience. And so while it keeps the heart of Jesus' parable intact, it also allows different people to hear the parable differently. And so let's take a look at this parable. First, let's think about who this sower is. All three, all three of these parables begin with a sower. And the sower comes to do a specific task. The sower comes to sow the seed into the field. Pretty straightforward. Um, and so at the beginning of Mark's gospel, he tells us that Jesus is coming to this into the uh, world and he's come to announce that the kingdom of God is at hand. And that so Jesus begins teaching and preaching and helping and healing and, of course, sharing parables. And in Luke chapter 8, this is where this, thought, this story appears. Uh, the chapter 8 begins with this verse. It says, uh, Jesus traveled from one town and village to another, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. And so then Jesus shares the parable of the sower, letting people know that the, the sower has come to the field, that he has had tra been traveling from one town to the one village, and he was sowing the seeds, proclaiming the truth of the kingdom of God. And so, perhaps the central theme of the parable of the sower is that the sower comes to sow the seed into the soil of the field. That Jesus has come, and he goes from place to place, from town to village, proclaiming the good news. That Jesus is bringing the kingdom of God into the kingdom of the earth, and that he is scattering seed into the soil of our world. 
So then we now need to think about what is this seed that Jesus is bringing? And that, that's the question that maybe a lot of the people listening might have had about that. In fact, they may have walked away wondering, why is Jesus just giving us farming advice? And so the disciples, after he's done preaching, uh, teaching, gather with him and ask him to explain the parable. And Jesus says that the knowledge of the secret of the kingdom has been given to you. So that whoever has ears to hear, let him hear. So what does Jesus want us to hear? What is the, the secret of the kingdom of God found in the parable of the seeds? Well, let's take a look at Jesus, as we see, he kind of tells them what this parable is about in some ways. And he says that the, the parable of the seeds, uh, it's uh, in let's see, Mark, he says in the parable, the farmer sows the word. So the seed that the farmer sows is the word, the, the good news of the gospel, that the kingdom of God has come to earth. That the seed being sown by the sower is this new life found in Jesus, that this new life is being graciously scattered in the dirt field of our soul. And that Jesus is coming to scatter the good news of the gospel into the world. And then Luke goes a little further. He says that the seed is the word of God. And to make that a little bit more complicated or deeper level, we can look at what John in his gospel, he opens his gospel saying, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. And in him was life. And that life is the light of all mankind. So John's declaring that Jesus is the Word. He is this voice of God, the speaker of creation, and yet also God himself. So the Word is the life that is being sent. And this life is also the light of all mankind. And so the sower comes sowing the seed of himself. Jesus is scattering his very nature into the soil of our world. He's scattering himself so that new life can spring up in the soil of our soul. And so perhaps the central theme of the parable of the seed is that the kingdom of God is being sown into the kingdoms of the earth. And that kingdom is the great soil itself. And that through him, this soil will produce an abundant harvest. And so then what is this soil that Jesus is talking about in this parable? And Jesus, he shares the parable of the, soil, of the soils and he says that there are four different soils that the seed comes in contact with. And that, um, and Jesus tells how the human heart is going to respond to him. How the kingdoms of the earth will react to the kingdom of God. And that three of these uh, ways will be less than favorable, but one will reap a harvest of unbelieving proportions. So the sower then sows the seed, his very life, into the soil of which he created. And Jesus explains that this, how the sower seed now is going to react with this good soil. In Mark, he says that the, uh, the seed sown on the good soil hears the word, accepts it, and produces the crop. Some 30, some 60, and some 100 times it stands. And so the sower sows the seed, and something needs to happen. And in all three of the gospel accounts that are um, where this parable shows, each of those accounts say that as the sower sows the seed, that's the they, people hearing the word. And so, in order for the good news to take root, the gospel needs to be heard. That sowing the seed is Jesus is sowing the seed and helping people hear the gospel. And now this isn't a uh, turn or burn 
have a golf tour. You better get right or you're going to get it not. But it's the gospel that says that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. That the sower has come proclaiming the good news that uh, whoever believes in him, those who hear the word will not perish, but will produce an exponential crop for eternal life. And so is the central message of the parable of the soil that, the soil that those with ears to hear, those who allow the seed of the good news from the sower to be planted in their lives will, will produce an abundant life? And that if you have ears to hear, you will reap an exponential harvest? The thing is that something happens between the sower sowing the seed and it producing a crop. And on Wednesday night, we talked about how each of the, the three Gospels, they actually said something different. They shared how a different variation of what happens when the seed, those who hear the Gospel, have produced between that and then producing this harvest. That, but each of these three things are actually fully true on their own but when it's come together, they actually provide a deeper understanding of how the kingdom of God is transforming the kingdoms of the earth. And so there's the three variations. First, Matthew says that the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. Mark says the seed sowing good soil hears the word and accepts it. And Luke says that the, the seed that fell on the good soil represents honest good hearted people who hear the word and cling to it. And so the parable of the soil, te the soil teaches that the good soil are those who hear the good news, understand it, accept it, and cling to the word of Jesus. So first, Matthew we talks about understanding. Right? Is those uh, who hear the good news don't understand it. William Barclay says that the, the good listener understands the word. That is to say, he doesn't merely listen, he bends his mind to ask, what does this mean? So the person who hears the good news doesn't just listen to the story of Jesus, but wrestles with it and, and works with Jesus to strive to know Jesus so that they can put Jesus at the forefront of their lives. But to understand is more than just having a, a sense of uh, comprehending with our intellect, right? Daryl Johnson, he says this, that understanding what Jesus means by understands helps us understand what he's getting at, right? So to understand what Jesus wants us to hear, we need to understand what Jesus means by understand. No, no, no. All right. So, because to understand is more than just making connections, right? It's more than just perceiving the meaning of it or grasping the idea or comprehending. You know, Johnson continues says, understand literally means to put together. It refers to getting in line with and yielding to. And so, those who understand in this sense are people who are getting in line with and yielding to the gospel, even when they cannot fully comprehend it. And so in the parable of the soil, the good soil hears the good news and understands its greater significance. And they, they wrestle with it, they try to bring it into their lives, and even if they don't fully understand it. And then as Dale Bruner says, it's uh, to understand is to stand under. It's allowing God's good news to rise above them and submitting to his authority. And so for Matthew, the parable of the soil is a person who hears the word of God, the good news of Jesus, and understands the need to yield their lives to Jesus, uh, in which they will lead to an abundant living. Now, Mark, Mark tells us that uh, the seed sown is the person who hears the word and accepts it. Right? So the good soil moves from hearing the good news to understanding to accept it. William Barclay says this, that 
The good listener accepts the word. They take it right into their mind. They accept the thing. In, to accept the thing into your mind means to really possess it. That uh, becomes a part and parcel of your thought and our lives. So to accept it means that we truly believe it. We, we allow it to shape our whole being. We receive it into our hearts and our minds and consent to its transformative power in our lives. And so for Mark, the parable of the soils are the, is about those who hear the gospel, that the kingdom of God has come to the kingdom of the earth, and that those who accept the consequences of, of fully following Jesus, will, he will pour into their lives the seeds of grace that will multiply the kingdom. Now, Luke, he says that the seeds of the good soil stand for those with noble, uh, noble and good hearts who hear the word and retain it. Another translation, the New Living Translation, says the seeds that fell the good soil represent honest, good hearted people who hear the word and cling to it. Other translations say hold or hold on to it or keep it. And so after hearing the word, the person understands it, accepts it, and then clings to it, holds on to it. Then Martha says that the good listener clings to the word. This means that it accepts the truth in such a way that he obeys it under all circumstances. And it's not something which he acts, uh, which he acts when it's convenient and disregard. Uh, so those who hear the good news, they allow it to be planted into the rich soil of their soul. They surrender themselves to the sower, and they cling to Jesus and hold on to his teaching. And so for Luke, the parable of the soil are those it's about those who hearts are seeking good and honest. The noble, amazing grace of the seller. They turn their ear to listen to the word and cling to it. They grab tight, they hold on to him, patiently persevering and becoming examples of others of the multiplicity of God's mercy and grace. So the central idea of the, the parable of the soil is that those with ears to hear, they understand the mystery of the kingdom. They accept it and allow it to transform their lives. And they, they cling to the good news that the sower has come to bring new life. So the sower, the sea, the soil interact and the, the, the kingdom of heaven reproduces in exponential ways. And it, it reaps a harvest of beautiful fruits. White Pentecost says that the good soil represents one who not only hears, but also understands, accepts, and clings to it. That the, the process is fertilized through the mystery of the Holy Spirit, who causes a person to understand and to appropriate and to consequently live by the word that has been received. So it says that there's fruit that comes out of this thing are the fruits from the spirit, or as we like to refer to as the fruits of the spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. The sower seeds spring up in the good soil, the rich and meaningful life that can be found in fellowship with the Holy Spirit. So the parable of the sower, the parable of the sower seeds in the soil of our soul is the good news of the gospel. The message of Jesus' kingdom, the kingdom of heaven taking root in our lives and reaping a harvest of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And through Jesus' amazing grace, he, he scatters the seed of his good news. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is here. The kingdom of God is sprouting up all around us. And whoever has 
ears to hear, let them hear. Whoever, has, whoever hears, let them understand. Whoever understands, let them accept. Whoever accepts, let them cling to. Whoever clings to Jesus, let them experience the fruit of the Spirit growing out of them into the lives of those around them. Jesus is the sower, sowing the seed of himself, his light and his life, and those who allow him to enter uh, into their lives, those who hear the word, those who understand, accept, and cling to Jesus, they will reap a harvest. Fruits of the Spirit flourish in the rock. And then Jesus commissions us to go and be the sower, to take his seed of amazing grace and share it with the world. We are to take the sower's seed and begin to sow it into the fields of those around us, to be people who are helping others hear, understand, accept, and cling to the sower. We are to share the gospel in our world through our words and our deeds, with our families, with our, at our schools, at our workplaces, in our community, all around the world. We are to be a people that are growing together, helping each other hear, understand, accept, and cling to Jesus, so that we can be people, people here at Bar Mill Community Church, will be people who thrive in the fruit of the Spirit, and that God will grow exponentially in our hearts and in our church, in our families, in our community, in our country, and all around our world. That the, the sower will personally, and patiently, and perseveringly produce a cross in our hearts and in our church. Whoever has ears, let them hear.